And think about this. We will not need doctors or lawyers after Armageddon. It requires faith to decline higher education. I have long said, the better the university, the greater the danger. This video was brought to you by my beautiful Patreon community and my YouTube channel members. Thank you so much. You know that one famous picture of Nikolai Yeshov being removed out of a photo with Stalin? Well, Watchtower is doing the same thing, but with Uncle Tony. In case you're new around here, Tony Morris is a former governing body member who was either removed or stepped down from the top leadership of the Jehovah's Witness religion. He was just gone all of a sudden, vanished like smoke. And since his disappearance, Watchtower has been silently deleting some videos with Tony Morris on them, usually morning worship talks. But last week, they erased an entire JW broadcast from their website, the 2015 January edition. Just gone. So let's get in the Wayback Machine, boys and girls, because today we are going to revisit this atrocious Tony Morris talk so that Uncle Tony's memory is not forgotten. As always, we're doing the cringe challenge, so if you cringe, you lose, and when you cringe, let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Back in 2005, the faithful slave provided counsel regarding higher education in the October 1st, 2005 issue of The Watchtower, pages 26 through 31. Oh boy. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that the governing body really dislikes higher education. Basically, any college education above a trade degree. I'm aware that you brothers have considered this matter before, but since then, another one of Brother Brown's daughters have enrolled in a school for higher education, which raises questions as to how this affects the congregation. So many JW Broadcasting Talks have been dedicated to demonizing college education, treating it as a hindrance and the waste of time. So Uncle Tony is going to tell us what makes higher education so bad. The article was entitled, Parents, What Future Do You Want For Your Children? The cover of the very next issue, October 15, 2005, asked the question, what is the best education? You may have noticed that we've not published that thorough of a discussion on the subject since that time. Why is that? Has the governing body changed its position regarding the pursuit of higher secular education? No. We feel that all of the cautions that we have addressed in the past are still valid. However, our goal now is to focus on and intensify our promotion of the pursuit of divine education. By divine education, Tony refers not to doing a deep analysis of the Bible by consulting the work of scholars. No, he means reading and studying Watchtower publications, which become much more dumbed down every passing year. It's gotten so bad, in fact, that the next book that JWs will be studying in their midweek meeting is My Book of Bible Stories, which is literally for little kids. Solid spiritual food right there. Parents and young ones are motivated to avidly pursue divine education. The quest for higher secular education becomes less and less of an issue. As most of you know, I am a father. My wife and I raised two boys in the truth. Once a father, always a father. So even though my sons are grown and married, I still think like a father. And that is why I wanted to address this subject on JW Broadcasting. So that's the issue at play, guys. Tony Morris is worried that attending college will lead young people out of the truth, which means out of the religion. We realize educational systems vary from place to place. In some countries, Higher education is provided by the government, free of charge. However, the cost of obtaining university training is not our primary concern. It is the potential for spiritual harm that has moved us to provide the cautions we have shared in the past. 
ultimately, it is the decision of the parents as to the amount of secular education they feel is necessary for a child to later care for a family of his own. As parents, we would be remiss if we did not encourage our child to pursue a skill or trade that would enable him to start off a marriage successfully. Having said that, it does not change the fact that all too often, our young people have met with spiritual disaster, especially after leaving home and living on a university campus. So parents and children, you need to have a goal and you need to have a plan if you're missing either one, Satan will provide it for you. And of course, he didn't take long to mention Satan, because when a JW leaves their religion, it's not because they made a choice based on their conscience. Nope, it's always because Satan tricked them. Young people, ask yourself, why am I considering additional education? Is it because I'm pursuing a specific skill or trade to support my service to Jehovah? Or have I been pressured by the system into believing that higher education will somehow make me a more respected person or lead me to a better life? Bro, education does usually lead to a better life. What are you talking about? Let me review the scriptural basis for our previous published concerns about higher education. As an example, 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Bad associations spoil useful habits. While it is true that the ancient city of Corinth was known for its immoral lifestyle, what was the Apostle Paul primarily concerned about when he penned those words? In verse 12 of the same chapter, he made clear that his comment about bad associations had to do with what the other persons believed. It was a doctrinal issue. If we are in continued association with those who do not believe the same, it can erode our thinking and convictions. How weak does your belief system have to be that it will crumble if you associate yourself with others who don't believe the same things? If your faith is that superficial, maybe it's not even worth keeping. Some have felt that spending time with non-believers in a university settings no different than working secularly with those who do not share our beliefs. And in fact, bad associations in the workplace can be a real danger. However, it is one thing to work on a job with others and quite another matter to immerse oneself in an institution of learning. At Romans 12, 2, Paul said, to stop being molded by this system of things, but be transformed by making your mind over. We are to be careful that this system does not mold or shape our thinking. The verse said to make over your minds, not hand over your minds. Higher learning can easily influence thinking and attitudes. Yes, boys and girls, remember, we are the only ones who are allowed to influence your thinking and attitude. We'll tell you exactly what to believe without you needing to do critical thinking. Isn't that neat? Elders in congregations that are in close proximity to universities are well aware of the repeated scenario of parents coming to the Kingdom Hall with a child that they're dropping off to attend the nearby university. Sadly, Often in a few weeks or months, the child begins missing meetings. And not too long into the school year, he totally disappears. Then the parents are upset with the local body of elders for not shepherding their child. My question is, who dropped them off at the university? So where does the responsibility really lie? Wow, <laughs> asshole. What a way to blame the parents of young adults who decide to leave the religion. JW parents already have a huge burden on their shoulders, having to raise their children in a high control religion, but now this asshole is blaming them. 
if their adult child ever decides to leave the religion. Way to go, Tony. Very compassionate of you. Maybe people wouldn't be leaving in droves if your religion could stand up to the tiniest of scrutiny. If we should be that careful about our association inside the congregation, the application is even more appropriate when it comes to institutions of secular learning. I have long said, the better the university, the greater the danger. The most intelligent and eloquent professors will be trying to reshape the thinking of your child, and their influence can be tremendous. One mom, I recall, asked me to try and help her son who was attending a prestigious name university in Rhode Island. After visiting him, I later had to inform her that her son now believed in evolution. She refused to believe it until he finally told her himself. How sad. <laughs> oh no, not evolution. <laughs> no way the boy was tricked into opening a third grade science textbook and actually understanding the foundational theory of biology. Now, if you're a reasonable Christian watching this, you might say, well, what's the big deal if he believes in evolution? Well, you see, dear viewer, if evolution is real, the entire JW belief system collapses. That's why Tony Morris sees higher education as dangerous because college students are encouraged to use critical thinking skills and of course, these skills lead you to debunk the entire religion. It's that simple. In Romans chapter 14, it counsels us not to judge or become overly critical of the decisions of others. As we mentioned earlier, ultimately the parents must decide how much education a child needs to succeed in life. But does that mean that any decision a parent makes regarding a child's education is fine with Jehovah? Encourages his followers to avoid judging others, then immediately starts judging the decisions of others. <laughs> Bro. Here Jehovah guarantees that one day, every person on earth will be a true worshiper of him. Will you be there? Will your son or daughter be among those alive? at that time. Do your personal decisions matter? Yes. Look at verse 12. So then, each of us will render an account for himself to God. Yes, we all will have to answer to Jehovah for the decisions we make today. May we all decide to play it safe before our God. Think of all the opportunities there are now to enjoy divine education, congregation meetings, family worship, assemblies and conventions, the JW.org website, and the station you're watching right now. But in addition to all of that, the curriculum for the Pioneer Service School has been revised and is getting superb reviews by those attending. Then there's the new curriculum for the School for Kingdom Evangelizers, that bolsters and trains students for a career and a variety of theocratic privileges. Yes, boys and girls, abandon your college education and instead join our institutions of higher learning where you will learn how to become an unpaid volunteer for the religion. Yeah, Tony, I think I will pass. Watchtower places such a huge importance on their advanced courses like the School of Gilead or the School for Kingdom Evangelizers and treats those classes as the best education in the world when they're really just a rehash of the same infantile study material that all JWs have access to. Personally, the highest course I ever attended in the religion was the Pioneer School, which is six days of intense Bible study. And to be frank, at that time, it did seem like I was going deep into the Bible and discovering all these hidden truths. But looking back, I realized I wasn't really learning anything profound. I just felt important because I had this pioneer title. The study material was basically the same, but thankfully I only wasted six days of my life in this course because those who attend Gilead, which is the top course in the religion, are supposed to study 
for five months. Five months of potent indoctrination. Of course the governing body wants you to attend these classes. They're perfect for making long life members of the cult. I recommend Gilead. It's, it's awesome. Anything in Jehovah's service is only going to bring you enjoyment, happiness, a sense of security inside despite living in a world that's full of insecurities. I would never swap it for anything in the world. Well, it's obvious that Jehovah wants his people to be educated. Bruh. And the amount of effort and resources that the faithful slave have put into educating God's people is second to none. People come to school, they attend a theocratic school, and they're built up, but then they go and they affect the people around them. But now, Tony's gonna tell us what kind of skills they're looking for at headquarters. In addition to promoting divine education, what secular skills will we be promoting? Skills that'll be useful to God's organization now and after Armageddon. For example, we need construction skills around the world right now. And think about this. We will not need doctors or lawyers after Armageddon but we will need carpenters and plumbers and similar construction trades. It requires faith to decline higher education and have the confidence that our material needs will be cared for by training in other fields of employment. Yeah, no wonder this talk was removed. It screams cult. Stop trying to become a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, even though we totally use members with those skills at Bethel. No, choose smaller careers that we can exploit right now, as we build more kingdom halls that we can later resell for profit. And at the end, he's super explicit. He said, it takes courage to reject higher education. Hint, hint, you want to be courageous for Jehovah, don't you? And you're not going to believe this next part. Speaking of lawyers, we have an interesting perspective from Brother Philip Brumley of the legal department. Let's go to our Patterson studio and listen to an interview of him conducted by Brother David Schaefer, a helper to the teaching committee. Thank you very much, Brother Morris. And we're delighted to have with us Brother Philip Brumley, overseer of the legal department. He's been a full-time servant for the past 41 years and for the last 28 years has been overseer of the legal department. Uh, Brother Bramley, thank you very much for taking the time to, to be with us today. I know you have a very busy schedule. My pleasure. How did it come about that you came to work in the legal department? Um, so I was uh, working in the carpenter shop one day and I got a telephone call from Brother Charles Steele. Uh, the governing body asked Brother Steele uh, who could go through law school to become an attorney. The organization needed a few attorneys to help defend the rights of Jehovah's Witnesses. So Brother Steele asked me, or basically gave me the assignment, uh, we want you to become a lawyer. So Tony Morris just spent 10 minutes telling us why Jehovah hates long college degrees. And now they bring this drone out of the basement, and it turns out that it was Watchtower who pushed them into law school? So receiving an education to improve yourself and your family is a no-go. But going through law school to work pro bono for Watchtower is okay? Are you serious? So the organization made a decision to send you through law school. Um, what effect did that have on you? Something happened that I was not uh, prepared for. Um, when a person goes to law school, the instructors, law professors, essentially tell the class, uh, you're the hope of humanity. You happen to have been born in the best country in this planet, and you happen to be among the few in this country who have the circumstances to be able to attend law school. You are the future uh, presidents, governors, senators, judges. But not only that, you're also the future social activists, the ones who are going to protect the disenfranchised, the poor, the one who needs their rights protected. If you do well, civilization will do well. If you do poorly, humanity may not survive. Now that may sound like a grandiose statement, but when you hear that repeated over a four year period, it can start creeping into your mind. 
Oh no, how dare these professors try to instill an optimistic outlook on humanity? Don't they know that the system of things is destined to destruction and that any activism work we do is a complete waste of time? <laughs> no, but seriously, I find this incredibly tragic because this dude could have actually helped out the disadvantaged ones with his law degree, but instead he uses his talents to settle CSA lawsuits and to defend a religion that constantly violates human rights. Way to go, man. Way to go. Uh, you're an attorney, you serve at Bethel. Undoubtedly, young people have come to you asking your opinion on this. What do you tell a young person who's considering pursuing higher education? Well, the first thing that anyone should do is to ask themselves, to closely examine themselves as to the motive. Is the motive really to seek first the kingdom, to use some uh, additional schooling to facilitate pioneering or serving at Bethel or serving where there's a greater need? Or actually is the motive one of obtaining a certain standard of living or a certain degree of prominence? So the real core issue is why are why is an individual obtaining this additional training? Notice how he lumped those two motives together as if they were the same thing. If you pursue higher education, it's not just because you want a better standard of living. No, you also want prominence and to make a name for yourself. All college students apparently have selfish motives. So rather than uh, uh, devoting or allowing this world to consume four, six, eight, or 10 years of studies, why not focus on two years of study to get some technical training that would facilitate or help someone to become a good regular pioneer? Well said. Thank you very much for taking the time with us today. It's been a real delight to be with you. And now we go back to Brother Morris in Brooklyn. Thank you, brothers, for sharing that very interesting perspective about the subtle mental conditioning that can transpire when exposed to higher education. Yeah, you're one to talk about subtle mental conditioning, you disgraced cult leader. You know all about that, don't you? Brother Brumley's experience in law school was nearly 30 years ago. Given the spiritual dangers involved, though, the governing body has decided that if we need additional attorneys in the future, we will not expose a member of the Bethel family to the environment of higher education. One brother likened his experience in a university setting to being in a house that is on fire. Spiritually speaking, he said, even if you escape alive, your clothes still smell like smoke. It has an effect on you. Higher education often instills a sense of superiority and self-reliance that is in direct opposition to the Christian personality. Yeah, the only ones who are allowed to feel superior are the governing body. The hypocrisy and self-projection are just oozing from this talk. Also, college doesn't need to instill pride, as if pride was a bad thing in itself. It can also teach us to work hard, to use critical thinking skills, to be open-minded, and to develop our skills. I think a loving, intelligent God would be pleased at us acquiring knowledge. Hell, there's no verse in the Bible that discourages higher education, and Watchtower knows this. That's why they have to resort to baseless fear-mongering to discourage their members from studying. Like the smell of smoke on clothes, these traits can be absorbed very quickly and can be very difficult to get rid of once they're part of the fabric of your personality. A circuit overseer sent me a letter in which he described what he called a picture-perfect witness family until the oldest son received a full scholarship to attend a university. The university was an hour and 45-minute drive from home. The family wrestled with the decision to send him off for his extra schooling. Finally, the opportunity to get this education basically free of charge won out. The scholarship included housing in a co-ed dorm at the university. Within just a few weeks, the son called his parents to say that he could not remain faithful to Jehovah in this environment. He begged his parents to let him come back home. The parents told him, no, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, figure it out. The short story is the son left the truth. 
parents divorced. His siblings are not doing anything for Jehovah. So sad. <laughs> what? I'm calling BS on this story. What happened next? Did they all die in a car accident? You see the level of paranoia this religion promotes? Not only did the son leave the religion, but that also caused his parents to divorce for some reason, and the other children also ended up doing nothing for Jehovah. It's such a slippery slope fallacy, and I wouldn't be surprised if they just made it up. But if it's actually true, then I hope the son got to finish his college and is now living a comfortable life. The opportunity of a lifetime turned out to be not much of a life at all. In contrast, one mother who was a single parent related this experience. When her son was a senior in high school, he was offered a university scholarship. The mom was concerned when her son seemed to be considering accepting the scholarship. She did not initially come right out and say no. Instead, she expressed her view by reminding him of the principle of giving our first fruits, our best, to Jehovah. She said, the years after high school are your best years because you are young and strong and healthy and you don't have a lot of obligations to complicate your life. Why not give your first fruits to Jehovah and pioneer for a year and then consider how much additional education is required? Her son decided to pioneer and work part-time instead of accepting his scholarship. He later served at Bethel. Looking back, he is absolutely convinced that this was the best decision he could have made. Wow, so the mom completely sabotaged the future of her child and now he serves at headquarters for free. Well, he's probably not even at headquarters anymore since they've cut a lot of personnel since this talk was released. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people who have done well in life without a college degree. That might be your experience. But encouraging your children to reject scholarships to perform unpaid labor for an extremely wealthy religion is not just irresponsible, it has destroyed countless lives. So many JWs who took this advice and are now old barely scraping by with their savings, all because they decided to put Jehovah first. How sad. As a father, my heart goes out to you parents, and please understand that we want the same thing for your children that you do. We want them to be able to care for their future physical needs responsibly. But at the same time, an extended application of 3 John verse 4 applies. There it says, no greater joy do I have than this, that I should hear that my children go on walking in the truth. Remember, divine education truly is the opportunity of an everlasting lifetime. Wow, that was actually worse than I remember. I totally get why they had to trash this talk. Not only is it given by a disgraced governing body member, it also makes the religion look like a cult. Hey Watchtower, let me tell you the most important internet rule. What you post stays here forever. Go ahead, erase all the Tony Morris videos from the website, cause I have them all downloaded and ready to go. That's what you get for wanting the spotlight so bad. If the governing body would have just remained hidden under the curtain, the world would have never known the clowns they actually are. But no. You just had to put yourselves out there, didn't you? You just had to be the center of attention. You couldn't help yourself. Well, here's the result. This video and all the other stuff you have deleted will be on YouTube forever for the whole world to see. Well played, guys. Well played. Now, I don't think this erasure means Watchtower is changing their view on higher education. Unlike the Mormon church leaders who encourage their members to go to college so they can tithe more, the governing body is much more stupid. If they had a speck of common sense, they would encourage higher education so their members could earn more money, more income, means more donations to the branch. But then again, when I'm thinking about it, college does expose young JWs to new ideas and it does encourage them to think critically, which a lot of times leads to them leaving the religion. 
So Watchtower kind of loses both ways. If they let their members go to college, they risk losing young people. But if they discourage college, the religion loses money. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's glorious. So thank you, Uncle Tony. Thank you, even though you are no longer with us. May your old talks keep making us laugh and cringe for decades to come. I miss you, Tony. You are the best. See how wise Jehovah is? So guys, let me know what you thought of this program in the comments below. And let me know the exact moment you lost the cringe challenge because I love reading your comments. If you would like to support my work, please head on over to Patreon or become a channel member. It's only $1 a month and you gain early access to all my videos. As always, thank you so much for your support. Take it easy, have a wonderful day, and stay away from the tower. The apostates and the enemies of Jehovah would say, well, that's gruesome, that's despicable. You teach your people these things? No, God teaches his people these things. This is what he's foretelling. And frankly, for friends of Jehovah God, how reassuring that they're finally going to be gone. All these despicable enemies that have uh, just reproached Jehovah's name, destroyed, never ever to live again. They're out of the way, especially these despicable apostates who at one point had dedicated their life to God and then they joined forces with Satan, the devil, the chief apostate of, of all time. They will vanish like smoke. So this, I thought this would be a nice memory aid. To this verse stay in the mind. Here's what Jehovah's promising. Hey. That's Jehovah's enemies. They're gonna vanish like smoke. What a godsend this proved to be. Go ahead and use your imagination. Jehovah won't fault you for that. They're gonna be sensational. See, I was uh, in Vietnam, a medic in that war. Uh, I've seen what happens to humans when they're mangled. You see it on TV, some of that. Well, till you smell human flesh burning from a helicopter crash people that look like uh humans like a hot dog on a grill blackened and splitting open i know what's coming in armageddon a lot of dead people a lot of dead people and we have no intention of stopping there we're going to talk about money now the fact is uh, we never beg for money but that's not to say we can't talk about money, uh, reflect on, so that we don't find ourselves, when it comes to contributions on a monthly basis or whatever, empty-handed. You have to take that into account, even if we're in the poor range. Well, that's ridiculous. We're not against education. Uh, we are pro-education. It's just that we are selective with who does the educating. No, heterosexual, that's the, the tight suit jacket and the tight pants, uh, better known as tight pants. And uh, they are tight, I mean tight, all the way down to the ankles. That is not modest, brothers. But like I've been telling uh, others, and, and this is a fact, the homosexuals that are designing these clothes, they like you in tight pants. But I, I'm going to give you a big confession. So that one particular night, we're, we're driving back, it was a little distance from where we were, and they brought that up. They're sitting in the back seat, so we're having this conversation. And I told them, I said, look, you boys remember, you gotta keep on the watch. This thing could go on and be ready for it to go to 2020. Honest. I mean, we're talking almost 40 years. We love you very much, but our love for you is just a reflection of Jehovah's great love for you and your little ones. May they learn 
develop and grow to become Jehovah's friend.